Hi, everyone. Uh, so our project is, we're LP and Margaret, our project is called DI Visualizer. Uh, if you just want to see our capstone site, or if you want to follow along, the URL to redirect is divisualizer.me, because Namecheap only gives you .me domains. So the original, we kind of had a research question for our capstone, which was, have tech workers uh, who identify as minorities been disproportionately affected by layoffs that, you know, you heard about in news? So a little bit of background on this is um, there have been some news reports from various uh, agencies that are like, oh, some tech companies say they value diversity, um, but reports say that there hasn't been a lot of change in that meter, coupled with the fact that layoffs are kind of putting a lot of these initiatives at risk. Uh, so in asking this question, we actually had to figure out what even was the proportion of people who identify as minorities in technology? And that's actually kind of a difficult question to answer in itself. And so since we couldn't answer our original question, uh, that's the question we tried to answer this month with our capstone. So what even is the current status of people who identify as minorities at large tech companies? And in talking about our users, we identified as our users. So I was personally interested because I came from healthcare uh, in a pretty like female dominant space with male dominated leadership. And also in healthcare, you work a lot with clinical statistics and you know, percentages lie. Over to you, LP. Yes, and I come from a background in education. So I spent the last 10 years teaching math and tech um, trying to help middle and high school students understand the world around them through numbers. Um, so I'm very passionate about making visible the things that companies can hide behind graphs or tables that look really scary. So let's jump into our data source. So we found, we decided to go with Equal Employment Opportunity Reports as our data source, which we'll be referring to as EE01 reports. Companies are required to file these with the government. They have been since 1966. They're not required to make them public, but some of them have made them public. But in this form, a PDF or even a PNG, and I took personal offense to this because I know the companies know that this is one of the hardest forms for data analysts to get at. It's the most annoying. So no problem, though. We persevered and the back end team, myself, got this PNG PDFs into this long format data with one row per entry, got it into our database. Um, zooming in just a little closer, this process did involve a little bit of manual. You can click to the next one. Um, we did use a PDF, a PDF to Excel converter, and some of the PNGs especially needed a little bit of extra attention, especially to the headers. The numbers came out okay, but mm, those headers, not so great. So clicking through a little bit, we got, um, after that, we got it into CSV with identical headers, and then the next part was all automated. So the Jupyter Notebook automated program would take it from this kind of two-dimensional graph into the long format that we wanted. Thank you. So okay, let's now it's over to Margaret. Uh, so now it's uh, demo time. So, oops, I clicked that a bit too early there. Uh, so again, URL, if you want it, is that? Uh, so this is the front page of our site. What you're looking at right now is the data in basic view mode. So the site is fully mobile responsive, shrinks down, pops back up. Um, and in basic mode, you can select for one company, one year, and to view by gender, race, uh, or job categories. Um, this also includes like a total count of how many employees there were and any notes on these EOs, because some of them have extra notes that like, oh, we're in this pay period, so that might not include seasonal staff, or we include some other companies that we've acquired. And we thought that was valuable to pass on to the viewers. Now I'm showing you an advanced mode, um, which again, you can pick a company, but the new selections, you can pick any one year and view a whole bunch of different job categories, or you can pick uh, all the years for one job category. So we can see, um, let me just, add some what would be considered kind of the traditional path in American corporate, which is like you start as an individual professional, go up to like a 
line mid-level manager, and then with some luck, you get to like director, senior VP. So you can see um, for Amazon, the proportion of uh, people who identify as female uh, decreases as you go along this traditional path. Additionally, um, for race, the proportion of diversity also decreases. Um, and then for any one role, you can also see the progress through time. So you can actually see that for professionals at Amazon, uh, diversity is increasing. Uh, we also have an about page, um, and this just explains our project, who we are, and it also includes frequently asked questions, the most common of which is actually, what is a professional? And I'm not going to go into that. You can go on our site and see. <laughs> and over to you, LP. Yeah, so for our findings page, we wanted to just pull out some of some interesting things that we found. So if you keep scrolling down, thank you so much. Um, um, the back end job got done pretty quickly. Um, so I was able to make a few more a few more graphs just to pull out some interesting um, interesting graphics. You can check those out. Um, and just wanted to highlight for folks, the, we were really excited um, to get the advanced mode working. That was one of our stretch goals because a lot of companies have ways of reporting their data that can obscure some of the inequalities. So we were excited to, to have that. And we'll go over the pro project limitations in another slide, but let's check out our contact page here. And I just want to shout out my awesome partner, Margaret, I was really grateful for her expertise in product management um, from, from her past and just kind of helping keep our group on track and stay focused on our um, objectives um, and also amazing front end design. So that actually is a good switch over to our next slide. Um, so we, our experience on this project, we each picked a meme. For me, it was the one on the left. Um, when your program's a mess, but everything works out in the end. So here it does end up saying restaurant, even though some of the things are out. Um, in this project, I worked on getting the back end working very quickly. And then I tidied it up by the end. The program's not a mess anymore. But it was cool to say, okay, we need this data now so that we can start working on it. And yeah, that was pretty exciting. Over to you. I think most of you have heard me complain about doing front end. <laughs> Um, and what I learned throughout this project is, you know what, I don't have to like it to do it. It's, it looks pretty good, right? Uh, so yeah, that's what I learned. That was also the challenge doing front end. And then we have some pitfalls and extensions um, here. So as we mentioned before, the EEO1 report form is from 1966. It has only certain categories for race and it only has binary genders, no data on expansive genders, disability, neurodiversity, sexual orientation. Um, there were some limitations of Chart.js, the program that Margaret totally learned 100% from scratch for, to make those amazing graphs that we have. Um, some goals, we, um, we'd love to have some further automation of our data pipeline. It would be great to have the PDF to Excel integrated into the program so we don't need to use a third party extension for that. And we would also love for users to be able to submit PDFs that they find because it does take work to kind of find these PDFs in the corners of companies' websites and then have a admin authorization to check and then post that to the database. That was out of the scope for this three week project though. Um, other ideas are buttons for users to share the graphs that they made to social media, again, spreading that knowledge so more people can see what's going on at these companies, a contribution page so our program can be self-sustaining financially, and a page that shows what companies haven't released EEO1s for advocacy purposes. And so um, that's the presentation. Thank you all for your attention. And uh, does anyone have any questions? Oh, I, I got a good thing for this, but we got to exit the screen. So what we found is um, if you look at basic mode for Amazon, it looks quite diverse in terms of race. Like you can see there's pretty proportional or like 50% representation um, of people who identify as Hispanic or Latino and people who identify as Black or African-American. But then if you pop into advanced mode, so 
if you can remember the numbers, about two, 250 to 300K. Uh, if we pop into advanced mode and you look at the you can see that most of those people are actually working in warehouse, not in as professionals or leadership. So that was like pretty striking for me. That was actually a suggestion you had where you were like, okay, now pop into what is this? And I'm like, whoa, whoa. And I really like how uh, Margaret made the numbers themselves show here on the front end so that you can get a sense, like the labor numbers are so much higher than any of the other numbers at Amazon. So it really, really, like skews their overall statistics. Another thing that um, companies aren't showing here is anytime they contract out labor. So the folks working in their childcare positions or um, cafeteria positions or cleaning the buildings, all of those folks also aren't represented. So that is an interesting thing as well. For example, Alphabet has like 50% TVC, which is temp vendor or contractors on staff. And you can see we're looking at 0% because they all have any labors listed. Um, but their largest demographic is actually professionals at almost 80%. Um, but that's because their data entry, their security, and their food is actually contracted out. 